Dylan, absolutely delighted to have you here with us today um, talking about um, diversity, equality, such a hot topic at the moment, and particularly the role that well-being might, might play into this. So my first question would be um, about your senior leadership team. Do you think that they have become much more aware of diversity and equality as a result of the coronavirus pandemic? Um, yes, thanks for, for, for having me and, and, and interviewing me here. Yes, I, I would absolutely um, uh, agree with that statement. I, I think they have, from, certainly from the point of view of MCOR UK. Uh, we've been running a, a diversity and inclusion program for, for some time. The last three years in particular, we've focused really solely on gender and uh, about making it a more inclusive place for, for our female talent and a more engaging place for our female talent to work. Uh, and we have actually started to progress that out of the other protected characteristics. Um, and, and there's been some there's been some sort of buy-in from our senior leadership team into that program, and we've even got our CEO sponsoring our LGBT plus uh, program. Um, it's not from a, a background that he's familiar with, so he's had to go through it and even look at his own unconscious bias programs, etc. So there probably hasn't been a great deal of traction other than that at this stage in terms of rolling it out across the uh, the rest of the DNI spectrum for us. But where COVID has had an influence, and what I guess we've, we've started to see is the effect that it has on, on those positions from a social economic point of view, you know, where, where most of our, uh, our, our ethnicity and, and diverse workforce is, is probably lower down the grading structure. Um, and that's probably the areas where I, I guess our senior leadership team haven't seen too much focus in the past. But certainly now with COVID and, and the, the, the results of having to send people, uh, have them working from home, the risk factors associated to BAME backgrounds um, uh, and what that means to them in terms of the COVID virus itself. Um, it certainly brought it more into focus. We, we met as a senior leadership team almost daily when from March the 23rd uh, onwards. It was quite a challenging time for us as a leadership team. And I, I formed part of that, that board of directors to the ELT. We called them executive leadership team. Uh, and our discussion points were, were around the health and safety aspects of things and what we need to do from a legislative point of view too. But the focus became much more focused on the individual. So we, we started to then categorize the, the different um, employee base that we had uh, and what more could we do to them. And, and, and um, I guess one of the things for us, well, one of our clients is Public Health England. We're a facilities management outsourcer. Public Health England is one of our clients. So, so we, we've been really interested in, in what they've been doing and, and where they, they've been leading on this. They produced this report around uh, BAME backgrounds in particular and what risks are susceptible to COVID. And what did that mean for us? So that, that meant we had to internalize and look at our, our teams. And we have a, a high portion of people from those backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, who work in our front of, of, of house type positions, our security-based roles, our cleaning-based roles. Uh, and we realized that we had to do more in terms of communicating to that population to, to make sure that they were supported and, and, and looked after, both from the mental health point of view, but also from, from the point of view of the physical health and, and their well-being as a result of COVID. That has sparked some further interest and dialogue with our executive leadership team around what does um, inclusion and diversity mean for us around those demographics. So it's in its embryonic stage at the moment. There is still a lot more work to do because we've only just recently started to progress from, from gender to into other areas, but it's, it's now a topic of conversation to the point where I, I will be submitting a business case in September, which is when we go through our forecasting to actually bring in a dedicated resource that is going to really carry our um, DNI activity for. We have a creating balance forum. That's our, our, our mechanism for diversity and inclusion. And I, I form part, I know I'm, I'm the HR director and, and I, I head up that function. We have a different chair from our operations team. And what we now feel is to really progress it away from just gender to have that real focus with an executive leadership team, but also the next level down in terms of our leadership managers underneath the board. We need to have sole focus on it. We really need to drive it forward. So we, are, we will be submitting a business case. And a lot of that has been supported by the, the fact that COVID is, has been a real surprise, it's been a, a real concern. Uh, and now we, we probably have a, a greater degree of understanding that affects the different backgrounds, which is leading on to a further DNI activity for us. And I know that you're on the early stage, as you say, moving from just doing gender to, to the broader um, areas of diversity and inclusion. Have you had a chance yet to think about how that might play into things like the kind of benefits you're offering or the reward? I know you meant mentioned mental well-being, for example. Is there yeah, maybe one or two examples of where you are able to do or where you think you're going to be focusing differently yeah, sure. in the future? So, um, I, again, I guess for us, the timing of this, 
is, is fairly um, is fairly good because we have a, a, a program of, of benefits at the moment which we would would have put in place um, probably about two years ago now, which was a, a flexible benefits platform, which is where our, our starting point was. And, and to get it over the line took took some persuasion of our of our leadership team, so our, our ELT, executive leadership team. Um, we put put in a business case, it was approved, and we started to look at the benefits that we would have um, in line for. You know, for those, we kind, of, we, we kind of classed them as the haves and the haves not. So the haves were the more senior people, so who, who benefits may be a bit more advanced, and the have nots probably further down that grading structure again that I mentioned, who, who maybe don't get the, the, the greatest of benefits other than the, the, you know, the statutory um, requirements and mm-hmm. holidays and, and, and bits like that. And that has evolved into a well-being platform. So as that journey starts to evolve, we moved it away from being a flexible benefits platform to being a platform that is well-being driven, that has flexible benefits associated to that. So we've, we've moved it, we've kind of split on its head almost. So it's this well-being stance. And, and as a result of doing that, we already have some really good things in there. Like they, our, our EAP is very strong. It's, it's a really good take up. We use the, the, um, the, the, the information that we get from there to also make some targeting interventions. We've produced a, a number of HR dashboards that all of our heads of and all of our account leads for the different functions that we have get on a monthly basis, which hones down into certain areas around the absenteeism, turnover, age demographics, all of those things. So we, we have, we've had that anyway. But what we have started to realize that, that with the mental health aspect, if our DNI program is correct, it's going to help to improve on the, on the well-being and mental health of the individuals. Again, certainly from those, those um, backgrounds that may be underrepresented in our business. We've moved away from just calling it DNI, as, as I said, it's the creating balance program. Um, and that's really to look at how we can become a more inclusive organization to work for. And what we start, so we use a, we use a third party consultant to support us. And we are using them to focus on ben- benefits that will associate with the different um, areas of, of DNI for us. So we're starting to look at things around um, discounts for, 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 for buying. Um, office equipment or equipment for home working for people that may be disabled and what we can do to support those uh, home workers. We're looking at things where we can um, perhaps have more inclusion activity um, for our, 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 our black and ethnic minority um, workforce. And we're using that um, external consultant mixed in with some of the existing benefits that we already have to see if we can we can find another mechanism for supporting uh, on the DNI process. So our, our benefits Aren't necessarily going to be solely linked to um, DNI, but they are. They are expanding to to include uh, areas where we think we need to touch on on things as as I mentioned, like disability, for instance, where we can, we can add some some value into that. Uh, one of the areas that we have noticed from a social uh, economical um, background, I suppose, or, or or an area where our workforce who are who are not earning as much as others or benefits may not be there, is around private medical care. Whilst we can't offer private medical care to everybody. What we've been able to do is, is through driving down some of the, 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 um, the sort of buying power that we've got as a, as a large organisation, is to be able to provide um, annual health checks for employees at a greatly reduced rate. And we've used that particularly to, to sort of target some of our uh, Bain background areas where there are high risk to certain things. And we've used COVID as part of that as well to push some of the communication is around, you know, why don't you look to, you know, it doesn't cost a great deal, you can take it directly from your wages. Why don't you you look to go and get yourself an annual health checkup? You know, and, and those are some of the things that we've been able to to do. And we've also brought in a, a, a financial organisation to support us in terms of debt consolidation as well. And again, we're seeing further down our employee, but maybe not necessarily just for, for the DNI aspect of things, but again from that social sort of economic background, we've been able to to see that a lot of our staff who may be low earners are probably the ones that like to have high debts. And what we've been able to do is consolidate those debts through the payroll process. And they're paying it off through payroll on a monthly basis at a greatly reduced rate of interest. So they pay it off earlier. But our aim isn't just to get them to pay these things off, it's to also get them to start saving as well. So we've opened saving accounts and things like that. And again, we found that that's really useful in the, in the process for our, our, our Crate and Balance program, where we've been able to educate people that may not necessarily think about saving because they're not from that kind of environment or that background. And we started to turn some of those people that are high debt people into savers. It's only a small level at the moment, but it's starting to gain a bit of traction. And, and again, that, that's the, kind of some of the areas that we're looking to, to, to progress. And what we see from there is a bit more, you know, it, it really from, from the return on investment for us, a bit more stickability. We've got more employees staying with us. Our, our turnover rate has dropped drastically in the last few years. So it, it, we're starting to see people are staying with us. We potentially may have left for a few quid more down the road for those lower based roles which again, 
typically would be our, our brain based employees at the moment. That is really interesting and some great examples that other employers can, can use. So um, really appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing with that with us today, Dylan. Um, no problem. And good luck with the journey and good luck with the, the new plans from September as well. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you. Thank you.